What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. Okay, this is my five biggest takeaways from the most recent town hall on June 13th, 2022. Again, this is not a summary video. There's other content creators out there, both written and video, that do amazing summaries. And you can watch the town hall on replay as well. So if you're looking for that, definitely go check out and support those content creators. This for me is just my five things that kind of stuck out to me that I wanted to expand upon a little bit more. So I have the official town hall summary pulled up that we can reference uh, for anything specific, but as usual, I also have my visual here just to give you an idea of what we will be discussing. So let's start right at the top. Number one, the balance sheet for the company is okay. Now, here's the interesting thing. Every, there's a lot of people asking, and for, for context reference, if you're watching this at some point in the future, the, the market is dumping right now. There is an issue going on with Celsius Network and a bunch of whale games that are happening. Bitcoin just hit like 22, 21, I think even, even a little bit lower than 21K. So there's a lot of fear in the market. There's a lot of anxiety. And so what was being asked uh, a lot in the town hall was how is the company doing if we are going very deep bare then can the company survive and the team was very adamant that they will be fine they will be here and they will continue working on the game and building something out i mean it's funny <clears throat> again I, these it's all sentiment right now right but that's all you can take so it was interesting to hear someone like matt even say you know we're going to be here we're not going anywhere the company is doing fine he did say that if you know it continues or it gets even worse then there could be potential downsizing which <laughs> stuck out to me because i'm just like oh i guess you know I, I i'm working with the team now so hopefully hopefully i'm not part of that <laughs> but um either way i it seems as though the company's in good shape and yabba matt was saying that even if he d wasn't getting paid, he'd want to be making this cool game. So again, a lot of that is sentiment right now, but it is reassuring. And uh, not that I have any inside info or can tell you anything, but from from what I've seen with the team, there's just a lot of excitement right now. Y you know, it's I can't tell you that the the team is going to be bear market proof, that this game is bear market proof, but. I love what I'm seeing so far. And granted, you know, we're, we're in extreme times right now, which I will say can get worse. And I have been saying that I don't believe we have reached maximum pain yet, right? I, I think this bear market is going to go on for another six to 12 months. So will we dip down further? I can't, I don't know. Will we just kind of stay in range and it's just going to be a slow bleed? I have no idea. Like there's a bunch of different ways that this could play out. But for people thinking that we're going to get back to, you know, the glorious all time highs anytime soon soon i'm just not one of those people right but what i do appreciate is the fact that the team is just continuing to work on this game and continuing to deliver cool updates so we had the ranked rewards we got modern and wild coming up and then there's a couple things that i'll be talking about later in this video as well so that's where things are at hopefully that should calm down some fears and nerves about where the game is currently at sure token prices haven't been as great Card prices have been holding decently well, at least the ones that are out of print. Uh, but, you know, this is just kind of what happens within this space every couple of years, maybe even every couple of months, right? Because it's very cyclical in nature. So nothing goes up forever, but just remember, nothing goes down forever either, unless it's Luna. But <laughs> we're not talking about Luna today. All right, number two. The sentiment from the team is that things are much improved. And I wanted to touch upon, they didn't they didn't mention this specifically, but it, even though it was asked, but the bots and multi-account situation. So here's the thing. The team is looking at this and they are seeing lots of green flags. They are liking what they see, although they are taking the feedback and saying that they will want to make some adjustments over time, but they're still gathering data. Now, there's some sentiment out there that is saying that, you know, this is terrible for the game, it's going to ruin things, and everything is going to fall apart. And maybe not that dramatic, right? But I'll, from different, different sources, I've been hearing that kind of talk. And while I understand where people might be coming from, I respectfully disagree, and, and respectfully disagree greatly, right? Like, I, I, I don't think that that's the case. For me, I look at this and say, the new player experience has been has been amazing. It's it's been it's been redone, revamped and now new players can come in and enjoy the game and get so much more out of it. Yes, I will agree that the, you know, the higher levels they will need to tweak, but 
right now, I'm happy with what I'm seeing because new players can come in. So this gets now into the bots and multi-accounting situation. I am not as worried about the bots and multi-accounting situation, primarily because of the fact that now you need to own the cards. So sure, can we get another influx of bots right now while card prices are low? Sure, but you know what that's going to do? That's going to eat up supply of cards and raise the value over time. So I'm not as worried about that. And at this point in time, it's not like the DEC reward pool is worth anything. So it's just about getting more cards and getting more cards out into the ecosystem. Now, the one thing I do want to touch upon is the fact that the amount of rewards cards coming in seems to either have stayed the same or increased, which I don't think is a bad thing. Because let me let me put it this way. A lot of these cards were getting farmed before through the bots. And with the bots farming this many cards, obviously the prices were driven down. Now with this update, the bots can still come in and farm, but they need to be part of the ecosystem. And what you're seeing is people now have the incentive to go and be the bots. What have I been saying? What did Godzilla say? We are the new bots, right? But why are you doing that? Why are people doing that? They're going out and, and creating other accounts and they're putting in the effort to get more out of the game. Why? Because the game is offering it in a way. Sure. Are there still some delegation exploits or things like that? Yeah, I think that might be addressed at some point. But right now you can go and get more out of the game by creating multiple accounts, figuring out the rental arbitrage. Watch Bulldog's videos for that. He's been he's been putting out fantastic content and and you individually can go out and get a lot more. Can bots do the same? Sure, but win rate still matters a lot more, and I don't know that the bots, unless they have OP cards, which they should be owning or renting at this point, can can really maximize their earnings the way that they used to. Sure, are they going to get chests? They will, but here's the here's the uh, the flip side of it. If we had shut down, you know, bots completely and made rewards very difficult to get, the print rate, like we never would have printed through the <laughs> the rewards at the at the rate that we're printing now, or just at all, right? Like things would have slowed down tremendously and the amount of cards hitting the market would be vastly reduced. Now, could you say that there is a benefit there? Sure, because if there's if the supply is constricted and demand remains the same, then maybe those card prices go up in value. But I would say that I'm not as worried about it right now because I think the team is trying to measure this out so that it does print through, right? And I'm talking about the rewards cards, both new and old. I think that they want this to print through within the next six to 12 months, maybe even six to eight months if you think that they want rebellion out by the end of, I'm sorry, by, you know, early next year. And so Rebellion is going to have its own rewards cards printed with it. So just something to think about, like now these rewards cards can go to you rather than just getting farmed by bots who use infinite amounts of starter cards. You can go, if you want to put in the effort, you want to put in the time, put in the investment, right, to get a new account or whatever the case is, you can go in and get these reward cards. And even if the bots do so, they will do so because they have either needed to buy the cards on the market or or they've needed to rent them from people like you and me. So just something to think about. Long term, I'm not as worried about this. I think this is great. Sure, there are tweaks. It's not perfect. And I said from the beginning, it's not going to be perfect. But you can see from the team's sentiment, they are very happy with how things are going. And the new player experience, which I will say is probably the most important part. We want new people to come into the game, right? So uh, the new player experience is tremendously better, so good that everybody's going out and creating second and third accounts. Will this last forever? I don't think so. But right now, this is a perfect time. This is an arbitrage opportunity time where you can go out and get a lot more value out of the game because sentiment is low, sentiment is bearish. Trust me, when the market turns, and again, that may not be for another two years, right? But when the market turns and people start looking back at games and if Splinterlands, and I'm saying if, right, if Splinterlands is still around, then you'll be in a position where people are coming in and these reward cards are no longer in print. The Chaos Legion packs are no longer available. Like that's that's how you need to look at it. This is an opportunity right now and you're not going to get rich by tomorrow. You are going to get rich by taking advantage of the opportunity and hoping to a certain extent, I don't want a bear market, but hoping that the opportunity lasts as long as possible so that you can get the most out of it. So that's how I would view things right now. But I digress. So let's move on to the next point. Okay. 
Uh, this was mentioned by Matt that they're going to make the changes, first potential changes, after next season. So they're still looking at things. A lot of people are complaining. A lot of people are bringing issues. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, right? Like I think people should be bringing up issues uh, validly and, and asking or making making constructive cr criticism and suggestions. But the first possible time we could see something is after next season. Are we going to see that? Personally, I don't think so, but now I'm starting to lean towards the fact that I think Modern and Wild is going to be delayed because I was hoping that we would get Modern and Wild by next se or season after next, and they're not really talking about it, and there's no MAV testing yet, so I'm, I'm a little worried that Modern and Wild is going to be delayed again, and yes, that is a hot hot topic button for me. That's a trigger issue. So I, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. But uh, if we're not hearing about that, maybe, maybe we do get some updates. Maybe they look at this and say, well, we're going to push modern and wild because we want to push out some updates to the, reward, the, the rewards earnings. And if there are any issues there or exploits that they want to quickly clamp down on. But again, from what we've, what we've been hearing so far and what they've been publicly stating in the town halls is that they seem to be Okay, and these might just be minor changes that come through. Okay, number four. Wow, we were ripping right through these. I love it. Okay, number four. This is an interesting one. Uh, Matt said this is actually already coded in, uh, but it is simultaneous battle effects. So this is going to change the nature of the battles that you are in. Now, wh what do I mean by that? Right now, based on the way that your monsters are positioned and based on the way uh, you are either on the top or bottom of the, um, you know, the, the battle scene or the battle perspective, wh wherever you are in that, you have an advantage to a certain extent, especially if you have a scavenge monster. Uh, what ends up happening is that it goes monster by monster, starting from the bottom monster and then going up to the top, mo or sorry, starting from the bottom player and then going up to the top player. So what essentially happens is that as players get, or as units get killed off, you will potentially earn life through scavenge. And if you are on the top, for example, if the monsters on the bottom die off first, and you would have had a monster through poison or through earthquake that would have died, right? Maybe it was only at two health that would have died if it didn't have scavenge. You get bailed out due to the fact that your monster is either positioned towards the back of the bottom row or it's positioned at the top, right? If you're, you're the top player. That is going to change, and apparently it's already been coded. So things like poison, things like earthquake, what is going to happen is now it sounds like there is going to be simultaneous battle effects. So when poison hits, it's going to hit all monsters at the same time, meaning that things like scavenge wouldn't be able to take advantage of this situation, right? Which makes sense. When you think about it, I, I still don't know how you get placed on the top or the bottom. Somebody once said, and again, this is all speculation. I have no idea, and I can't prove where I heard it from, but somebody once said that the person who submits their team first goes on the top, right? Because usually the top has a little bit more advantage since since this, uh, or be, due to this uh, exact issue, right? Uh, the fact that if you're on the top, all of the things that happen within the game happen to the bottom player first, then they happen to the top player. So this could change, I mean, not dramatically, but it will change the nature of a lot of battles. And I mean, how many poison and earthquake battles do you get in, in, in a day or in a day of grinding? I, I get a decent amount. So this will change my strategy and this will, you know, again, not that I was necessarily trying to put monsters with scavenge towards the back, but it could change the nature of how some games play out. There are maybe some games that I won or lost previously, that wouldn't have been the case if it had worked out this way, if if the 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 battle effects were fair. And I I, I do mean that very seriously. Like it, it it will now be more fair in that way. So I'm excited for that. I don't know when that's coming, but he did say that it's coded in. So I'm just curious what they're waiting for to release something like that. I don't know. I, like I was looking on the roadmap. I don't see like some crazy, you know, like update to rank battle rewards that they'd be holding off for. So something like that, I would love for them to put in next Tuesday if they can. And if it's coded in, right? Uh, well, he, he did say that they wanted to run like a MAV tourney, tournament or something in, in um, what is that called? The test net. So that's fine. But I would like this stuff sooner rather than later. It changes the game. But again, it makes it more fair in many ways. Okay, last one uh, before we go on to just a couple bonus things is 
there are giants, there be giants potentially coming in Rift Watchers. So this was spurred by somebody asking about the mana cap, and I believe the highest mana cap right now is 60, and someone was asking if they are ever going to you know, put in additional mana caps between 60 and 99, which is the, the highest. Um, and there might be more, than, it might be more than 60. I don't know whatever it is, but I, it's like 60 or 60 something, and then it jumps all the way to 99. So Yabamat was saying that right now, you know, it doesn't really make sense, but in the future, there are some larger 10 plus mana cards coming in Rift Watchers that could, you know, give them a reason to increase the mana. So maybe we hit some sometimes in like the 70s or the 80s, right? Like at this point in time, I, I don't think I've ever filled up a 99 mana battle. I don't have a lot of those giant cards anyway, but if Rift Watchers is going to have some of them, that should be really interesting to at least consider, right? Because now, all of a sudden, I'm taking a much closer look at all of the monsters with the giant killer ability. Uh, and for those who, who don't know, there's, there's several monsters. There's an ability called Giant Killer, which does double damage to monsters that have or that are 10 mana or more, or that cost 10 mana or more. So if we're going to get some more giants, that should be really exciting. I think we had, I think we had giants in both Untamed and dice uh, across each of the, the expansions. Uh, we didn't have as many in in uh, Chaos Legion, so I, I guess I'm not surprised that we may see some in Rift Watchers. But again, that could that could increase some of the uh, the value for these giant killer cards or cards with the giant killer ability. So I'm excited about that. You know, we're getting some some little nuggets here and there for Rift Watchers. Again, like you know. Everything is going to change the <laughs> every every new card, every new expansion is going to change the meta. And from a gaming standpoint, that's awesome. I'm really excited about it. I'm at a point where I don't even know that I can keep up with like trying to level up and max out all my cards. So I don't even know what's going on anymore. But I'm excited for Rift Watchers. And while I don't want it to be here tomorrow, I don't want it to be pushed off to like next year either. I'm I'm hopeful that we do get it in the August September time frame that they've been throwing out. And um, that should be exciting. Okay, so the last two things, and I'm going to skip to the bottom one first. There was a mention of boss monsters. Now, I don't even know anything about boss monsters. This was something before my time. But uh, Agra did say that boss monsters would probably be probably be figured into land so they're not going to happen anytime soon and because you know the functional portion of land is not coming out until sometime next year but you know for those who are interested in boss monsters i figured that would be something worth sharing um Here's some eye candy, and I guess we'll just go through all the eye candy. So there's some animation here for the novice badge. There are some modern versus wild concept badges. So this is interesting to see here. Um, I'm assuming this is modern just because it looks clean. I, I don't know, actually. I forgot I forgot which one they were, they were pointing at. But what I wanted to get through to really for eye candy was the... Um, was the land. Now, it seems as though these look like the land cards, right? Because land is going to be an NFT. So it's it's shaped in the form of a card and it has kind of the, the rarity and uh, symbol, right, for the splinter symbol loaded in the middle the same way that the monster cards do. So something like this is a legendary land where you, you know, overflowing hills that is magical with dragon magic. So again, land is going to be so complex because there's like, you know, not infinite, but definitely a wide number of variables that you can put in for the type of uh, the type of land, the type of resource that it has, the splinter that it may belong to, uh, and the, you know, the, the, the type of land that it is magical. Here's another one. Uh, now this is occupied. And I don't know what this symbol is. I guess this might be just occupied. But this is interesting too. So this is a fertile forest, which is a, a rare. Um, now with occupied lands, I, I believe that nobody then owns these. Or maybe, oh no, I'm sorry, that's that's incorrect. You would own these, but I guess you can't build anything on it, but you can get some some benefits. So I, I don't really know all the details on, on occupied land at this point in time. But it's cool to get some land eye candy, which... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really looking forward to. So land is still way, way down the road. But uh, at this point in time, and I'm hoping that I can get maybe a couple more plots before then. But, you know, at this point in time, it's something cool to look forward to. And hopefully you're enjoying the game enough that we will we will get to the uh, we will get to the launch of land, even just phase one sooner than we realize because we're just having so much playing. Uh, so much fun playing. <laughs> all right. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to. Those are my five biggest takeaways from the town hall. Again, you know, this is this is happening in a very down week for crypto. So if you are worried, if you are scared, if you are nervous, 
It is totally normal. We've been through this before, but uh, you know, the team tried to keep everybody assured of where they were at. And uh, you know, I, I will say, at least from my part, playing this game allows me to stay very involved in crypto while also having fun and not worrying so much about price action across different uh, across the the different tokens. Like for me. Um, sure. Do I complain about the SPS price all the time? Actually, I don't even really comp- complain about the SPS price. The SPS price is going to be what the SPS price will be. I complain about the lack of utility and that directly affects the price. But, you know, ultimately, like when I look at this, I'm just like, I'm going to keep accumulating or at least, you know, collecting whatever I get through the airdrop and through, um, uh, through what's that called? Oh, uh, the staking rewards. But, Overall, like I, I'm not as worried about this. For me, it's a long-term play. I get some benefits from it. I get some benefits from holding DEC for the time being. Um, you know, I have my land. I have my cards. Like if things continue to dip down further, I, you know, Agrod was saying that this is a great opportunity. And I, I posted a video yesterday, like saying, where are the opportunities here? Again, I'm not even saying this as financial advice. This is a game at the end of the day. So when you're looking at this, like. If you want to spend your disposable income, not your investment income, if you want to spend disposable income on buying cards or buying assets within the game that would improve your game experience, well, take a look at the market, compare it to where it was three months, six months, nine months ago, and try to speculate on where you think the market could go in the future and then make a decision on, hey, should I buy in now, right? Like the assets here aren't sold unless you're buying packs, but packs are a... um, Packs are uh, a gamble in a sense. It's a roll of the dice. Like the assets here go on a fair market value. And when I say fair market value, it's just like somebody selling them. Somebody got them uh, through a pack or bought it from someone else and is now selling them. And there is a market price. So this isn't like some something that's uh, static. It's very dynamic. Like when you play another game and you want to buy something within the game, it may have a simple price to it, but that's because the game exists within its own ecosystem and the currency within there, the value doesn't really matter. Here, the value can be extracted from the game at any time, which makes it beautiful, right? This is this is the beauty of like Web3 and crypto gaming. So these prices are dynamic and you know, when you look at the history, when you look at the reasoning for the history, and then you look at the future and speculate, hopefully you can come to a decision where you say, hey, you know what, I really want to get this card XYZ or whatever it is, or land or nodes or whatever the case is. And uh, right now, based on where it's been and where I think it may go in the future, I think this is a good time to grab it because it's going to make my playing in the game or my interaction with the game, whether it's your player, investor, it's going to make my interaction with the game that much better. So that's all I have for you in this video. I will catch you all in the next one and I will see you around the game. Take care.